Willie Kong dropped out of primary school in class two. He was staying with his grandparents when his grandmother was arrested for stealing school supplies for him. She had been the only one working, so Willie had to leave school to try and earn money to help his family. The only work he could find was collecting scrap metal. <laughs> Scavenging for scrap metal is hazardous work and one of the worst forms of child labor. Child labor is considered a violation of a child's basic human rights. This is because children have a right to protection from work that is bad for their health or prevents them from having an education. In 2008, the International Labour Organization, with support from the European Union, launched a global project in 11 African, Caribbean, Pacific countries aimed at tackling child labour through education. The Pacific countries selected for this project were Papua New Guinea and Fiji. It is a, an EU policy to uh, work towards eradication of child labour, in particular the elimination of the worst forms of child labour. It's not just uh, in Fiji. I think the EU feels that this is important in all countries in the world, and but therefore also Fiji. Some of Tackle's first activities were to raise awareness of the issue in order to get widespread support for collective action. But the denial phase took some time to address. You know, there was a time when we, we couldn't even talk about the subject in an open way because, no, it doesn't happen in our communities. Because, you know, we're proud of our cultural traditions of family and village and community and statehood and so forth. So, you know, and we recognise that child labour is wrong. I think if there is one obstacle, it'll be our general apathy. Sometimes people walk around town, you see a, a child that's begging or a child that is doing some work and you know automatically in your heart that that person should be not doing it. But it's like litter, we just walk straight past. Everybody has to believe that it's something that they should do. It exists within the community, but often within the, the shadows of the community where people feel that nobody's looking. I can have the child work in the garage, in the backyard, and collect bottles. Children are not going to school, so why not use them? Yeah? When we go out into the fields to tell people that this is child labour, there, there is a reaction, a strong reaction, which means that we need to create more awareness in this area so that people recognise that there is a problem. This problem must be at first acknowledged by the stakeholders, by the policy makers. Right? We need to also make our society aware of this problem so that uh, more people are involved. The first step to addressing the issue of child labour was to raise awareness of its existence. This was partly done by gathering hard data about the extent of child labour in Fiji. Research teams coordinated studies on children working in many different activities. The research teams included members of the Ministries of Labour, Education, Statistics, Social Welfare, as well as workers' and employers' organisations, Save the Children, FSPI, and live and learn. The studies found that child labour, including the worst forms of child labour, existed in Fiji. Children were found in commercial sexual exploitation, in illicit activities such as begging, stealing and trafficking drugs, in hazardous work such as construction, scavenging in dumps for scrap metal and handling pesticides and working below the minimum age of employment. The studies highlighted the links between child labour and issues that children faced, such as their family situation, 
abuse and other concerns that led to dropping out of school. When children are engaged in commercial sexual exploitation, they are deprived of the opportunity to attend school and they drop out from the school system at a very early stage and most of the children that are in our program, they have uh, barely completed their primary school education. Uh, there was a lot of interest in uh, information on child labour, which was uh, kind of lacking at the time when the discussions were first started. With, uh, with facts and figures, uh, you, can, you can come up with programmes uh, that could be more effective or probably more targeted towards uh, addressing the problem of child labour, uh, uh, having an idea of what the situation is really like on the ground. Most of our work is in poorer settlements and squatter settlements and there are, are about 230 squatter settlements throughout the whole country. We always knew that there were children in child labour, but we never knew there were so many. So this project deepened our understanding that there are a lot of young people out there, uh, children in child labour who should be back in school and are not, and also want to be back in school mm, if they can. Special questions were developed jointly between ILO and the Fiji Bureau of Statistics to be included in an employment and unemployment survey conducted by the Bureau. At the moment, uh, the small surveys that, uh, or the data collection that has been carried out uh, addresses a particular area only. Uh, for this one, since it's a nationwide survey, it should come up with the best estimate of child labour in the country. Although the data from the government study has yet to be analysed, child labour is clearly more on the national radar in Fiji. And this means that it is being discussed more at the national policy level. It is a concern because in the first place they should be in school. When they drop out of schools they don't have enough skills to be able to work or to be able to live comfortably in the world, like sometimes some of them end up in the wrong places and end up in prison later on. What we need to do is to strengthen the giving a second chance to students. Education in Fiji is compulsory up to year 12. Although education itself is free, schools levy fees to cover the cost of textbooks, building maintenance and other expenses. For many parents in Fiji, they are unable to pay these fees and their children have to leave school. The Ministry of Education is trying to control these expenses to retain students in school and is also integrating technical vocational education into secondary schools to better prepare children for employment opportunities after leaving school. There are two, actually two reasons. One is um, the fact that you get lifelong skills and the second is uh, the basic employment uh, uh, skills. A child's right to an education and their right to have adults act in their best interests are two of the basic rights children lose when they must work in different forms of labour instead of attending school. At the Dutt farm in Singatoka, 11-year-old Shinal Dutt, her brother and three sisters must all help their father with the planting and picking of vegetables even if that means missing school. Naturally, when children get into child labor at an early age, uh, it, it uh, hinders their development and of course it, it uh, definitely uh, uh, prohibits uh, them from getting an education and be able to also have a decent living when they grow up themselves. And this then becomes a vicious cycle and they continue to live in poverty for generations if they're not pulled out of that, uh, that situation. The key to the tackle project in Fiji has been the involvement of a widespread group of strategic partners, all working together towards a common goal, removing children from labor and returning them to school. 
Well, we've actually set up a specialist unit within the ministry called the Child, uh, Child Labour Unit. And in addition to this, in the various districts, we've set up uh, committees. Okay. And all of these uh, committees are expected to go out, and if they see uh, there are any issues with you know, um, children who should be in school are actually working, they can advise our labour officers. And the emphasis is always giving them that education, those extra skills that will allow them to get decent and more productive work when they become adults. People have got to realise that children should be in school. There are structures that are in place and really it makes it easy. It just needs to ensure that this is on the radar and that people are aware and it's about a real commitment to ensure that we, you know, we wipe out all forms of child labour in Fiji. This is even more urgent with the worst forms of child labour such as the Sexual Exploitation of Children or CSEC. Uh, in order to successfully confront the crimes of uh, CSEC, coordination amongst institutions is very important and particularly coordination amongst uh, child protection agencies, amongst institutions such as the Pol Fiji Police Force, such as the uh, Prosecution's Office, this is indispensable. We, we feel that uh, the innovative part of the tackle project has been the mainstreaming, bringing awareness of the child labour and the aspects of child labour into all, um, all parts of society in Fiji. The tackle program has provided training to many stakeholders, employers, uh, labour unions, welfare officers and education officials. There has been grants, financial support to organisations that directly work to remove children from uh, child labour and support them uh, back to access education and training. An important community-based partner, the People's Community Network, or PCN, works directly with children in the squatter settlements of Fiji. And a lot of them have got dreams and aspirations that weren't being fulfilled. And that was another very interesting part to, um, to see that those dreams were there. Uh, they wanted to get back into school. Seventy of those are actually back in, in schooling. And there's another 32 who are not yet in school but are awaiting assessment. PCN does have in every community a committee uh, which we call an education committee and their responsibility is to see that every child in the community is going to school. Counselors from PCN meet with the students regularly to assess their progress. One of the students assisted by PCN is Chone Tong. But Chone found it difficult to make enough money for his family with the work he could find, so he turned to crime. I had one case for robbery, and I was uh, end up with a Prison. But through PCN's intervention, Chone was released from prison and was able to return to school. I'm thinking about my future. In 20 years' time, what I will be doing. Planning to go to maritime for taking in boat engineering. Mole Turanga View was another student who was helped by PCN's intervention. After dropping out, I was just like roaming around. I, <coughs> my parents can pay my fees, so I just did. Um, I did some jobs at some house. I always said to people who were talking about me, I feel humiliated because my parents were. They look up to me, so I can go to a better place. Uh, it's another opportunity I feel like um, to be chosen, to get be sponsored again, to be back in school. Other key stakeholders included employers. It had to be made clear to those who employed children that they were possibly breaking the law and could in fact be harming the children. We don't believe that child labour 
exists within our membership because it's really all the um, the larger employers uh, and even some of the smaller medium uh, enterprises are our members eh? and I think the statistics and surveys have shown that where it exists is amongst some of the very micro employers uh, in the country. On the other hand the, some who walk I guess a grey line in this sort of thing and find okay the children aren't there and of course a lot of this comes from a, a request and a bit of pressure from even parents to give their child some form of employment just to earn money. Now this is where the line's got to be drawn so instead of putting paying money out in wages perhaps the better way is to invest in the child going into uh, to school. Labor unions are another important partner. One of the key roles they play is to lobby government and employers to take a stronger stand against child labor. Our direct partnership would be the Fiji Teachers Union. They identify children who are at risk of dropping out from school and try to retain them in the schools through educational assistance. The FTUC tries to undertake a monitoring role and we uh, do referral work as well. In the long term, simply keeping children in school will not solve the larger social issue of poverty. Once they leave school, they still need to find employment and creating employment opportunities requires investment. It requires investment in education, it requires investment in infrastructure, it requires, obviously it requires investment from the private sector and enterprises. At some point I think we've got to take this discussion about child labour and broaden it to be a discussion about children and the school to work transition and, and that, that whole policy discussion about jobs for young people and livelihoods for young people. For children like Willie Kong, the opportunity to return to school has given him more options for the future. But returning to school after two years has not come without effort. His life in school, though, is a far cry from his life collecting scrap metal. And although his future is far from certain, he now feels more confident to plan life after school. Um, Perhaps the Tackle Project's biggest success, though, has not been in making a difference in a few children's lives, but in creating awareness of the problem and building working relationships between stakeholders to ensure that child labour in Fiji will end. <laughs>